July was Fibroid Awareness Month, and with a diagnosis of the health condition can come all sorts of questions. That's why Dr. Marguerite Brathwaite is here to discuss the condition that's developed during women's reproductive years. Good morning. Hi. Hey, how are you guys doing? Good, good to see you. Good. Yeah, good to see you too. Good to have you back. So what are uterine fibroids and who do they really affect? Well, uterine fibroids are like benign tumors that grow from the smooth muscle of the uterus and they can grow into big tumors and they can cause um, symptoms you know to uh, women of reproductive ages you know you see them mostly between 30 and 40s but some of the younger women can get uterine fibroids as well right uh, so we we have some 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 pretty graphic pictures to show uh, everyone at home so what are the common signs and and symptoms of, of uterine fibroids you can get irregular bleeding pelvic pain pelvic pressure you can have pain with bowel movements you can have pain with intercourse so it depends on how big the fibroids can grow and sometimes some people are asymptomatic and don't even know that they have fibroids right so i was gonna say so it can, it can basically affect every part aspect of life you right. know laying down can be uncomfortable standing up can be uncomfortable yeah. it, can, it can affect everything everything like and then you can bleed a lot and become anemic and need multiple transfusions or iron transfusions and you can get very tired from anemia that you might not know because your periods may be very heavy so it can affect all of that and a lot of these symptoms you know there's a lot of conditions that sort of mimic these symptoms so how is this diagnosed um, when you see a gynecologist, if they do a pelvic exam, they can feel a mass and they may ask for an ultrasound to um, confirm whether or not they're feeling uterine fibroids. And uterine fibroids can coexist with other conditions like endometriosis. Um, you'll find it often and that's when the lining of the uterus um, goes on the outside of the uterus and the implants in the pelvics. And then you can have also adenomyosis and that's when the lining of the uterus invades the muscle of the, fib of the uterus and causes pelvic pain. So sometimes those conditions also can coexist with fibroids and cause a lot of concern. Yeah, what are, what are, some, what are the, the treatment options available to women out there for, for uterine fibroids? If the fibroids aren't that bad and they're just having symptoms like irregular bleeding, they may try to control their bleeding with, you know, birth control pills to try to have uh, regular cycles. Um, but if it starts becoming a real issue, you know, they may have to look into more um, significant options like um, uterine artery embolization, which they can put like little, the radiologists can put little particles inside the vessels that supply the uterus and block the blood flow to the uh, fibroids so that they can shrink or decrease. Um, sometimes if they're really big, some people may give them a shot of Lupron, which is a medication that can suppress the ovaries and decrease the estrogen in your body. Fibroids are considered uh, thought of as being estrogen dependent. So when you get into menopause age, that when your estrogen lowers, that sometimes the fibroids may shrink and not bother you. So Lupron kind of puts you in like a menopause state and shrinks the fibroids, and, but it's only temporary because you can only get it for three months and then by six months they can come back. So people may use Lupron just to decrease the bleeding before they have surgery or to help with their anemia. Um, and then um, you can do surgical treatments, okay. which would be like um, minimally invasive surgery. Um, we use the robot. We can do robotic assisted myomectomies and just remove the fibroids um, or robotic assisted hysterectomies and take the uterus totally out so that you don't have to deal with it anymore depending on size and circumstance. And um, with the robotic minimally invasive surgery, uh, no hospital stay, you go home right after. Um, improvement, a recovery time is faster and quicker. Yeah. Now, who are the ideal candidates for these procedures? Because obviously it's ranging, I'm sure, case by case. Sometimes it's more severe, mm -hmm. not so severe. So mm -hmm. what does that look like for, for person to person? I think the biggest issue when it comes to fibroids is, besides anemia, is fertility. Do you still want to have babies? So and that's going to dictate a lot of how you decide your, your treatment's going to be. If you're not caring about conceiving, then you may want to go ahead with a myomectomy or a hysterectomy. Um, or uterine or embolization, but when you still desire fertility, um, you, that's, that's when it becomes an issue. And so um, small fibers you don't have to do anything about, you know, like they're benign tumors, only when they become symptomatic, you may have to intervene. And so if you still desire to conceive, then you may want to 
maybe consider a myomectomy or just treating the fibroids symptomatically. Well, Dr. Brathwaite, thank you so much as ever. Yes. Full of information knowledge, and I'm sure you've helped a number of viewers out there, and certainly they need to come and see you, mm -hmm. get checked out first so they can make a determination. Exactly. Statement. Thank you so much, guys. For more information on Dr. Brathwaite's practice and to set up your next appointment, visit innovativewomenscare.com, and her office is located on West Sahara.